we're doing a series on the Old Testament, and I, during that, for the last few sermons, I've been speaking about uh, God being with us, and I want to continue that theme today. And my title today is The God Who Carries Us, and I want to begin with a personal story that reflects very well on God, but it doesn't reflect very well on me. So um, this is a while ago when um, we were, I thought I'd get my stuff ready for church in advance, and I couldn't find, I was using a clicker at that point to, um, to change the slides, and I couldn't find the clicker anywhere. And so I prayed, God, please help me find this clicker, I need it for church, and, and um, I looked around, I couldn't find it. So I prayed again, and I, and I just, Lord, I need this clicker, may I find it? So I, I, I thought, I'm going to search the whole room meticulously. So I searched everywhere, every nook and cranny, I couldn't find it. And by that time, I was getting a bit annoyed with God because like, he knew it where it was, and he wasn't telling me. So, so anyway, I prayed again, and, and I was kind of, I must confess, I said to you, the story didn't reflect very well on me. So anyway, I prayed again, and I kind of, well, you know, well. So anyway, so I started um, loading the, the, the car up, and this was the bag that, um, <clears throat> that the uh, video projector is in. And I picked it up, and it's got a handle, and I would normally pick it up by the handle. For some reason, I picked it up by the handle. It's not very heavy, but I put my hand under the bottom. And, oh, there's a bump. That's weird. So I looked inside and took the projector out. There's nothing, but there's a bump. And then I realized there's a false bottom to this bag, and there's a kind of a flap in the bottom. And under the flap, where I'd not, obviously not felt, was the remote. And so it was like God saying, I felt God saying to me, look, Andrew, I'm, I'm looking out for you. Just don't worry about this. Don't worry. Now, I'm not going to say that every prayer we answered, God's going to do that sort of thing for you. But I really felt God was giving me a message at that point that, um, that this is a God who carries us. He is a God who carries us. And this is the, these are the words that I want to look at from Isaiah 46 today, where God speaks about carrying us, because it's such a, a, um, a tangible image. And um, you can see, you probably, those of you here will have seen Dan carrying Declan today. And it's kind of like a, a mother or father carrying the child. It's, 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 very, it's an image that's all very familiar to us. And I want to start by asking, are you carrying any burdens right now? Is there anything that you are carrying right now? And I also want to challenge you that by the end of the message, I want to encourage you to give God that and to trust God with carrying your burdens. So, let's come to the passage. Have you heard the, uh, have you ever come across a shock clickbait headline? Something designed to shock you to make you read it? I'm sure you have. Uh, here's one I saw recently. Brazil destroys Chile. I thought, I didn't know they were at war. Like, what is happening here? And then I read the next line, Brazil defeated Chile 3-0 at uh, Maracana, leaving La Roya without a chance to play in the next World Cup. Here, check out the highlights and goals from this match. So, you know, that was the kind of shock headline. Here's another one that I, I saw yesterday. Mayor's arm destroys England to leave West Indies on verge of victory. And then you get uh, Kyle Mayers was the destroyer of England's second innings with a five-wicket hold to put the West Indies on the verge of victory in the cricket final on Saturday. So again, it's sport. So um, here's the shock headline we read in Isaiah. Bell bows down, Nebo stoops. Or well, you might say, well, I'm not terribly shocked, but I don't really even get it. I was so shocking about that. Um, well, uh, if you knew what they represented, then it would be a shock headline for you because these are the two main gods of the Babylonian Empire. So the first, uh, here's, uh, here's um, um, oh, let's, I'm going to give my outline first before I go back to that. 
We're going to understand the shock headline in Isaiah 46. Then we're going to go through the passage. And then we're going to take in what it means for us, that God has promised to carry us. And my goal is that each of us would truly take in deep encouragement from this chapter, that we would truly be encouraged from it. So let's go back to our headline. Uh, so the, this is uh, Nebo. And Nebo was one of the the, the uh, gods of the empire, and there were six Babylonian kings named after Nebo. Did anybody know any of their names? N yeah, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar, Nabonidus. There were, yeah, there were several others, that's right. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, by the way, means Nebo, protect my frontiers. That's, that's the name. Uh, the other one, Bel, who we sometimes call Marduk, they sometimes called Marduk. Uh, any names, persons' names with Bel in them? Bel Shaza, that's right. That means Bel, may Bel protect the king. And they trusted these gods to help them at war uh, because up to that point they'd always won. And they, so they assumed that these gods must be the, the, those to, to thank. Now, uh, let's try and imagine what this headline, why this was a shock. Uh, to the Israelites who are reading this. Now, what would be the most powerful country in the world today in terms of military? Well, probably the US. Now, if you saw a shock headline that said, um, uh, American army surrenders, Biden begs for peace. That would kind of be shocking, wouldn't it? That's not a sports headline. That is very, very shocking. And this would be the level of shock that they would have when they saw it. I'm trying to connect with you what it would be like to see this headline. That's the kind of level. Um, and this was, this was serious. This wasn't just some clickbait. This actually was a serious prophecy. So before we get on to the details, we need to understand a little bit about what idols were and how they worked. So um, we don't see much in, in our in our culture today, not, not this physical kind of, of idol worship, but it's all about trying to manipulate spiritual demonic forces and trying to get some sort of leverage over the way they're going to behave for you. And uh, so, so what happens, sometimes a person would be possessed and there'd be demonic possession, uh, but very often what they would do is they would try and, uh, they would try and get a god to associate with an object by doing various rituals and by worshipping the object and so on, they could get a demon, a demon to associate with this object. And we know from the Bible that there are, you know, there are demonic, demonic forces and there are some major demonic names. And so they would get, they would carve these idols and then by these rituals get the demons to associate with them. And uh, uh, so... Although the object wasn't the, did, was just a piece of wood, there was a sense in which there was something about that object that um, represented the God, that when they sacrificed to it and, and, and so on, they were worshipping that God. So there was a, a really intense kind of evil there. And I would suggest to you that... Um, that that sometimes or even today there are objects which have been used in some sort of occult practice and it's not good to have those around you know sometimes there are people who become Christians and they'll burn all of these occult objects and that's probably a good thing because even though those don't actually have a physical power they can be associated with familiar spirits that connect with them so anyway that was just that's a bit of background um, so let's just turn to our passage now and so here we have the, uh, the, the passage that we're going to go through. Bel kneels down, Nebo bends low. The images weigh down animals and beasts. Your heavy images are burdensome to tired animals. Together they bend low and kneel down. They're unable to rescue the images. They themselves head off into captivity. Well, what is happening here? 
What's going on? Well, this is a prophecy of something that's going to happen in their lifetimes. Uh, the, the city of Babylon was extraordinarily well defended. This is, what re- this is stuff that remains even today. And it, we're talking about something that's two and a half thousand years old. And these walls, well, get it, there was 10 kilometers of walls around this city. And the walls were... Um, Eight meters thick. Uh, I don't know how, you know, my, the walls of my house are you know, a fraction of a meter thick. This is eight meters thick. And uh, they were 100 meters high. 100 meters high. But so not only did they have impregnable walls, but in case somebody should, should siege them, they, it was large enough to have fields inside. They could grow their own crops. They had a river, the river Euphrates, flowing through the city. So in theory, they could survive indefinitely. Uh, but this river was actually their weakness because we know through history what happened that the Persian army way, way upstream, built with tremendous amount of work, an artificial, dug out an artificial lake, routed the river into it, and while it was filling up, they blocked off the river going south to the city, leaving a dry riverbed. And during a festival, the Babylonians were celebrating this festival and just reveling and so on. They snuck into the city through the riverbed and the city was overnight was defeated. It was a shock. And then that night, sorry, that uh, once they were captured, they took the people and their possessions off into captivity, and including their gods. And so the, the image here is, is of a donkey, and they've loaded these donkeys up with these Bel and, and Nebo on their backs and these heavy statues are weighing down the donkeys. And as the donkeys kind of weigh down under the weight, these poor animals, it looks like the, the statues are bowing down under this weight. And the poor donkey that's weighed down. So here is the single message for you and I today. These idols have to be carried. But God says, I will carry you from the cradle to the grave. That is the message today. Bell kneels down, Nebo uh, bends low. Their images weigh down the animals and beasts. Your heavy images are burdensome to these tired animals. Together they bend low and kneel down. They're unable to rescue the images. They themselves head off into captivity. It's saying that Bell and Nebo, these gods, can't even rescue their own images. Listen to me, O family of Jacob, and all you who are left from the family of Israel. You who've been carried from birth, you've been supported from the time you left the womb. Even when you're old, I will take care of you. Even when you have gray hair, I will carry you. I made you and I will support you. I will carry you and rescue. I don't know about you, but those words are just so beautiful for me. They just, maybe because I've got a bit more gray hair than most of you, but, but like, this is just so, this just so deeply touches me. Um, and God says, let's make some comparisons here. <clears throat> let's do this comparison. Um, uh, let's, let's look at how these things, to, these things compare. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I used to know a guy who had a, a boat. And I'm not saying he was idol worshipping it, but it was quite an expensive boat. And he had to, every fall, he had to have pay to have it taken out of the water. It was quite large, out of the water and stored over. And then had to pay to have it cleaned. And then he had to this. And, and there was a whole lot of stuff he had to do to look after this boat. Um, the boat never looked after him. He had to look after the boat, uh, constantly requiring attention and money. Another guy uh, I talked to um, had bought a house that had a swimming pool. And he said to me, oh, I'm never going to buy another house that has a swimming pool. He says, I have to do so much with it. I have to do all these things and clean it and change that filter and so on. I feel like the swimming pool owns me. I don't own the pool. And I felt like saying, well, you know, um, uh, why don't you let the pool look after you for a bit? <laughs> you know, it's, this is the idea that, 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 that's going on in these verses. Like, let's compare this here. 
Um, so here's somebody, they've, they've got a top quality idol, no expense spared, you know, the very best, the very you know, gold and silver and jewels, the very best idol. And, and there, um, but it's dumb and it's paralyzed. What can it do? It can do nothing. And the funny thing is that there are lots of parallels with us today. We do the same thing. We invest in things which cannot carry us. To whom can you compare and liken me? Tell me whom you think I resemble so we can be compared. Those who empty out gold from a purse and weigh out silver on the scale, hire a metalsmith who makes it into a god. They then bow down and worship it. All of this investment in this god, they put it on their shoulder and carry it. They put it in its place and it just stands there. It does not move from its place. Even when someone cries out to it, it does not reply. It does not deliver him from his distress. So here we have, it's exactly what I'm talking about, the investment in something which actually can't bring you back anything in return. So the passage carries on. God wants a comparison here. He says, remember this so you can be brave. Think about it, you rebels. Remember what I accomplished in antiquity. Truly, I am God. I have no peer. For I'm God, there's no one like me. And then he describes himself, who announces the end from the beginning and reveals beforehand what has not yet occurred. So it's the prophetic word he's giving here about Babylon, who says, my plan will be realized. I will accomplish what I desire. Who summons an eagle from the east, from a distant land, one who carries out my plan. A while ago, Anne and I went um, to, I don't know if it's still open, we went to the, the uh, African Lion Safari in Ontario. And uh, the most impressive thing that we saw wasn't actually the lions or tigers. It was a, a woman who gave a demonstration with an eagle. And we walked out into this um, area with her. And um, she had this great big shoulder pad on. And there was no eagle. And there was a lake. And then notice right across the other side of the lake in a tree was a massive eagle. You know, it was just so big and it was there in the tree and she whistled. And this eagle start, flipped its wings and started flapping and it flew right across the lake. And you think, that thing is coming for us. And it came and then it kind of hovered a bit and it landed on her gloved arm. I was just amazed. In England, I would say you're gobsm gobsmacked. <laughs> and um, I was just, whoa, this is, this, is, this is amazing. That she can just control this huge wild thing with a whistle. And God is saying, you know, I can do that. <clears throat> He's going to get the Emperor Cyrus to rebuild Jerusalem. You know, he's just going to take the most unlikely thing. He's going to get this powerful world leader to come and rebuild the temple. He can do it just by whistling, just like, like uh, um, summoning an eagle. He can do it. Yet I have decreed, yes, I will bring it to pass. I've formulated a plan. Yes, I will carry it out. Uh, so um, I want to ask you, and we're coming on to a little bit of, of challenge now, do you think that you're going to be enjoying life in a year from now? Well, unless you're a complete pessimist, you're going to be saying, well, yeah, I think I'm going to be enjoying life. Um, so I'm going to say, um, are you investing your time and energy in re and resources in something that's going to be paying off for you in a year's time? Well, you almost certainly are. You may say, well, I'm studying and planning to graduate or I'm working hard in my career and I'm planning to get, you know, I hope I'm getting promotion or I'm, you know, I'm doing some financial investments or I'm, so, um, you know, something you're doing, you're investing in, you, maybe there's a relationship you're in and you're looking for it to, 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 to deepen or be married or something you're in right now and you're looking to invest and you're putting your resources into that. And uh, uh, so, and that's great. I'm not saying this is any way bad. But here's the most important question that I want to ask you today. Are you investing in your relationship with God? 
Are you investing in your relationship with God? Because in this passage, God has been challenging those who invested in the idols. And they put all of this effort into the best quality idols, and the idols couldn't even move. And God is saying, look at me compared with these things. Look at me. I'm the one who can do all of these things. Am I not worthy of your attention? Am I not worthy? Um, uh, so maybe you can say, I'm planning to devote extra time and energy this coming year to getting to know the Lord more. Because I know this will pay much greater dividends than time and money put into material possessions. That getting to know him more is the best thing I can do with my resources. These other things are not wrong, of course. They're gifts from God. Um, but they will always be burdens. Here is the message of the passage. They will always be burdens. God is the only one who can carry you and promises to do that. Let's read the last couple of verses here. Listen to me, you stubborn people, you who distance yourself from doing what is right. I'm bringing my deliverance near. It's not far away. I'm bringing my salvation near. It does not wait. I will save Zion. I will adorn Israel with my splendor. Uh, uh, so this is here. It's talking about the short term, but it's prophetically talking about Jesus coming in the longer term. And God's promising. It's amazing here. This is God's grace that even though they're stubborn, they're distancing themselves from doing what's right. He's still going to save them because he set his, he's given them his promises. He set his heart on them. And he's going, to, he's going to carry through with his promises. And uh, I want to say that um, as we think about how this applies in our life and how this can work in our life, um, God has got a calling on what he wants you to do in your life. And let's, uh, let's just go back to my outline. Uh, we looked at the shock headline and how to understand it. We've been through Isaiah 46, and now I'd like us to take in what this message means for us and uh, to, really, to really get this. Um, so this is, this is a, a message, I would say, to summarize, these gods had to be carried, but God will carry his people. We have burdens that we carry but God says he will carry us. So why is it a difficult message? What is the challenge of this? I think it's because we like to be in control. Uh, what God is really asking us to do is to surrender control and to trust him. Uh, from the cradle to the grave, isn't God amazing? And this is what he wants us to do. And I want to suggest to you that God will always give you what you need to do what he's called you to do. If he's called you to do something in your life, then there will always be provision. And that doesn't mean to say we have to work, we don't have to work, but there will be provision for it. Sometimes when I'm preparing a message, God decides to take me through an experience which I need to learn in order to really understand the passage. And when I first started looking at this passage, which was actually a while ago I was studying this, um, I, was, um, I was looking at the passage and I thought this would make a good sermon. So I started studying it and we had an internet outage. And that's so annoying, you know. But I, I could keep on studying, but it was so annoying. And there were things I couldn't do with the internet outage. And so I... I I called our service provider, and they said, well, it's actually Bell provides your, your connection. You have to raise a ticket with them. So I called Bell, raised a ticket with them, and uh, they said, oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. So there, at that point, um, a little while after that, my, our landline died, which is all through, through, also through Bell. And I thought, oh, no, those must be connected. Um, it turned out they weren't. It was completely random that that would happen. Um, anyway, at that point, 
Anne um, spotted uh, uh, a bell van outside and thought, oh, maybe, maybe it's the, maybe they come to fix it. It turned out they hadn't. They were randomly in the area. Anyway, Anne went out and spoke to the driver and he said, oh, I'll come and have a look. Came to have a look and fixed our landline, but not the internet. So uh, anyway, eventually it came back. But the story that God was speaking to me through this is, Andrew, I can take care of that. You know, you've raised a ticket, but you, you don't, if, if you don't have any internet, then you're not going to need it for preparing this passage. You're not going to need it because if you needed it, I would provide it for you. If you needed internet, then I would give it to you. Just trust me. And so, and that was like, oh, you mean I can relax, God, and just like <laughs> let you look after this? Yeah, you can give it to me. And I want to suggest to you that we carry a lot of tension, a lot of worries, a lot of stresses. And the core question is this. God has things he wants you to do. And he's, you know, you can trust him that if it's not there, he's not going to hold you responsible for doing something that he didn't provide for. He's going to carry all the things you need. And you can just take that tension off yourself and give it to him. So uh, that's another little story that doesn't reflect that well on me. So, so, so it's, but hopefully it reflects well on God. So we want to lift him up today. So um, I want to go back uh, three chapters to a message, some verses that I read a few weeks ago about being God being with us, just to connect these things together. And we're going to end with these verses. So as there are three... We read, now this is what the Lord says to the one who created you, O Jacob, that formed you, O Israel. Do not, don't be afraid, for I will protect you. I call you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'm with you. When you pass through the streams, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not harm you. For I'm the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Deliverer, since you are precious and special in my sight, and I love you. I want to ask you, do you believe this? This is really the, the difficulty this morning is not understanding intellectually. The difficulty is actually really believing it in our hearts. And I want to ask you, what burdens are you carrying right now what are you carrying right now? And are you prepared to give them to God right now? And if you're not a follower of Jesus this morning, that is what becoming a Christian is all about. It's about no longer trusting in the things around you to carry you, but trusting God to carry you. And all, what you need to do to become a Christian is to take the step of renouncing your trust in the things around you and in yourself to carry you and instead trusting Jesus to look after you and provide all your needs from the cradle to the grave and of course on into eternity. So once again then the, the message, oh I didn't read the last line then, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be afraid for I am with you. These gods had to be carried but God will carry his people. We have burdens that we carry, but God says he will carry us. So this challenge then, finally, that each of us would truly take in the deep encouragement in this chapter. Now, what I'd like to do to end up here, if you're comfortable, I'd like you to stand. And I'd like us to read through these verses together. And if, you, if you're uh, comfortable, I'd like you to ho hold your hands out like this, which is like you're, you're symbolically giving your stuff to God. And uh, I'd like us to read through aloud these verses together. Um, so let's, let's do that, okay? Uh, listen to me. You who have been carried from birth. You who have been supported from the time you left the womb. Even when you are old, I will take care of you. 
Even when you have gray hair, I will carry you. I made you and I will support you. I will carry you and rescue you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we come with hearts overwhelmed with your goodness and our undeserved gift of you carrying us. Lord, we receive this. Lord, help our faith. Help our trust to give, to truly give these things to you and trust you to look after us from the cradle to the grave to the end of eternity. Lord, we give it to you now in the name of Jesus. Amen.